Hello everyone, I'm Lois. Welcome to Lois's Kitchen, Cooking Made Simple. Today we're going to be making beef and spinach stew and serve it with boiled potatoes. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe and please do leave comments below on the recipes or dishes you would like to see me cook. On to the fun part, the making of our dish. <laughs> So today to make our beef and spinach stew, we're going to obviously need beef, which I've already pre-diced. We're going to need our spinach. Um, I'm using baby, young baby spinach, which I've pre-washed um, already. I'm not going to cut it today um, because I want it just to wilt and I want it whole. If you haven't got the fresh spinach, you can use frozen spinach and it comes um, diced or um, whole so these are the options you can use them we're also going to be using chopped tomatoes um, about two tablespoons of tomato puree and I've got onions you're going to use some onions about three to four onions I love onions uh, because they give the base flavor for any um, savory dish you're making and I've got this um, shallots and then the normal brown onions which I've pre-diced. This gives some sweetness. It's not very sharp, but it's very sweet and this is very sharp. So I, I want a good balance of the onions. Then I've also got my scotch bonnet, which is going to give uh, stew some heat. And I've got it pre-sliced, um, um, diced over here. Now you need to be very careful if you're not used to spice or heat then you can use just about one of the scotch bonnet but if not you are just like me you you always like some heat in your stews or your soups then you can use about three or four but you just need to make sure you don't overdo it now over here i've got um a base seasoning blend which make it's made up of ginger garlic onions and you know me i said um, we like some heat so with some scotch bonnet as well. In a later video, I will show you how to make this spice blend for seasoning any type of meat or fish. So in another video, I'll show you what other ingredients you can add to it. So this I'm going to be adding to my beef and I'll add a little bit of salt. And obviously I know every household has not this particular brand, but you would have all purpose seasoning and some stock cubes. I've got um, the vegetable stock cubes, the shrimp, and then the beef stock cube, which I'm going to add to my beef. Then I did say we're going to serve the spinach stew with boiled potatoes. So these are the potatoes. Obviously, I'm feeding a family of six, so it's going to be more potatoes. And I'll show you how we peel that um, shortly. Also, the starter oil that we're going to be using, the fat is going to be and palm oil which is native to um african dishes african cooking it's made from the palm fruit so that's why it has the red um color if you haven't got this you can by all means use vegetable oil you can use um olive oil as well sometimes when i run out and i can't go to the market or to the african shops i just use veg uh, virgin extra olive oil and that works perfectly all i do is i just flavor it a little bit just to give it that back home um, flavor so we're going to start by getting uh, um, beef seasoned and then we're going to steam it so now we're going to add uh, beef all of the diced beef into a saucepan and then to it we're going to add uh, seasoning and then a teaspoon, about a teaspoon of the all-purpose seasoning. You can be generous with it. I've just added a, a heaped teaspoonful. Okay, now all the ingredients list for this recipe is going to be in the description box below. So do well to check it. So once you've added all the seasoning and you just need about a pinch not a lot because we've 
the seasoning all pepper seasoning does have salt so we're going to limit our salt um, adding more salt to it so once it's all well combined we're going to cover it with our lid and then we're going to leave it to steam until all the juices run clear and then there's no pinkness there's no redness and that's how we'll know the beef is done and ready for our next step okay so we'll leave that to steam i'm just going to put it on the heat on medium um heat we don't want it too high because we want it to simmer gently so that it would absorb all the the seasoning okay now into it i'm just going to crush or crumble the beef stock just give it a little stir just so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan i'm going to cover it again and then leave it to cook okay now the next thing we're going to do is to make a stew and i've put my dish on the hob on medium and what i'm going to do is i'm going to add my palm oil palm oil is saturated fat so it remains solid at room temperature so we're going to heat it up i don't want a lot um about this much is fine there we go and i'm just going to um, leave it to melt and become liquid fat and to it i'm going to add some stock cube this is just to flavor it so i'm just going to crush it in and then as it melts it will sort of um, flavor the palm oil now back home they use some um, salted fish to give it that pungent flavor but i haven't got that today so i'm just going to use my shrimp maggie cube right now you can see that our stock cube and the palm oil is blending well together you can see it's all dissolving okay so that will just give the oil some enhanced flavor now into this we're going to add our chopped onions so just give that a quick stir and we're going to saute the onions um, for about five minutes then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients so we'll leave that to saute but once that is sauteing you can just give it a stir from time to time we don't want it burn we just want it cooked um, very quickly softened without no browning and our beef is also going simmering away but i'm going to check it as you can now see that it's all gone brown there's no pinkness there's no redness so you can see any blood and you can also see that we've got more juices on there that is fine i did not add any water to this it's just the natural juices from the beef that is coming out so we're going to leave it it's done you can use it at this point but i just want the beef to tenderize a little bit more to make it a bit softer for chewing so i'm going to leave it to keep on simmering in its own juice um, for about 10 more minutes so you you leave this cooking for about 20 minutes um, for it to be very soft and tender if you don't want it soft and tender you can use it straight away once it's all changed color and the beef has gone brown now our onions have sauteed nicely so this is the kind of softness of the onions we want. We don't want it bent. So um, once it's softened like this, we're going to add our chopped peppers, all of it. Stay it. And then we're going to, to it, we're going to add all our tomato puree. And then all our chopped tomatoes. Give it a stir so that it's well combined.
and then we're going to leave it to simmer gently and then we stir it from time to time just so the bottom of the uh, pan um, does not, not get sticky so we stir it from time to time don't stand stirring continuously that would not help just leave it give it some time to cook so i'm going to leave it simmering and whilst that is cooking i'm going to prepare the potatoes so these are the potatoes i'm going to be using i've peeled them and i'm just going to half them the smaller ones i'm just going to half and put in water cold water by the way the bigger ones i'm just going to half and then cut into two again so like that easy peasy put them in water give it a little bit of a wash and then we're going to put them in cold water to boil now i'm going to just put the washed potatoes into the water and i'm just going to put it on medium heat and bring it to the bowl and leave it to cook until the potatoes soften now these potatoes are for a family of six um, so it's going to feed about six people and i use the bag the 2.5 kilo bag of maris piper potatoes i use i love using maris piper potatoes for boiled potatoes because they are softer and creamier and tastier but that's me okay once i've added all the potatoes and make sure it's submerged under water and then you've got enough water covering the potatoes i'm just going to put um about a generous pinch of salt just to improve the flavor so after about 15 minutes uh tomatoes peppers and onions have simmered nicely and you can see it's also thickened that's the sort of um red test for readiness um we need and then you know if it's reduced to this much you can see where we started from you can see the line over there and then you can see how much is reduced okay and it, whilst it was simmering we did stir once in a while just so it doesn't catch at the bottom we don't want to catch it at the bottom so this is ready now and also our beef is ready so i'm gonna go over to the beef on the back hob that is ready and then you can see it softened a little bit and all the natural juices of the beef has reduced so what we're going to do now we're going to pour this beef i'm just staying it so we've got all the juices in there you can see it's reduced and what we're going to do now is to pour it all into our tomato sauce i want every single piece of beef in there with all the stock because that is where you get the natural flavoring and taste from so everything in there nothing left and then we're going to stir it in and then we're going to leave it for about five minutes just so the tomatoes and the beef um, gets well combined and also the beef takes on the flavor of the tomatoes and that will give once we add the spinach it would sort of give us the full burst of flavor we're looking for so i'm going to leave it right now let it simmer for about five minutes and then we go on to the next step after five minutes when with the beef and the tomatoes have combined more i'm going to add my vegetable stock i'm just going to break it in stir it and i'm also going to taste with a teaspoon and make sure when you're tasting unless you're cooking for yourself don't double dip what i mean by don't double dip is don't dip your fingers in or dip the teaspoon or the spoon that you're tasting with so what i'm going to do i'm going to taste but i'm going to taste it with a piece of the beef as well so i'm just looking for a nice piece 
nobody's got to know you're tasting the beef. So with my teaspoon, I'm just going to taste it. Oh, hot. Mmm. <laughs> Just the right level of salt and chili and taste I'm looking for. This is about ready. So, the next thing we're going to do is add our spinach. Um, because the beef and the tomato sauce is already done and it's cooked, I'm going to now add my spinach. It's already washed. And I just want the spinach to wilt. When it wilts, it won't be this bright green. It will just take on just a lighter green color. And what I'm doing is I'm just trying to stir it in so that I can add the rest of the spinach. Don't worry if all of it doesn't look like the spinach will fit in the saucepan. It will because spinach, as it wilts, it will just shrink or it will just reduce. So I'm just adding and I'm just going to stir it in to the tomato sauce a little at a time until it's well combined. Okay, so remember when I said um, when the spinach wilts, it shrinks? This is it. This is 700 grams of young baby spinach. And remember at the beginning I said I wasn't going to cut it because I prefer it this way. I can see my spinach. When it's cut, it sort of disappears and it doesn't look that nice. But I want to see my beef. I want to see the tomatoes. I want to see every ingredient. So here we go. That's it. Can you see the color of the spinach as well? So it's changed color a little bit. So I'll just leave it for about five more minutes um, just for it to wilt further and then we're going to plate up. So here we go. This is our finished beef and spinach stew served with uh, boiled potatoes. This is a delicious simple meal you can have at lunchtime, you can have for dinner. You can also serve it with boiled rice, you can serve it with yam. You can serve it with plantain or sweet potatoes or cocoa. So now our beef and spinach stew with our boiled potatoes is ready. Thank you for watching Lois's Kitchen and do tune in to our next cooking session.